of the old ground these days. This is the new Wembley, set to host its fourth final. And Marcel will like this statistic. The three previous occasions here have resulted in either a Chelsea or a Pompey win. John Terry and co are ready. David James and co ready. Time now to join of the English football season. The uh, FA Cup being carried to its plinth by Sergeant Major Dickie Halloran of the Second Fusiliers, representing the thousands of members of our armed forces watching on BFBS around the world. No doubt uh, a large Royal Navy and Royal Fleet Auxiliary contingent supporting Pompey today. A red carpet entrance for the Cup finalists. No Wembley debutants, they've all walked this way before. But the romance of the Cup, alive and well, with a, a Portsmouth story that, even by the standards of this competition, has taken some believing. Has it got one last twist in what is almost certainly the final chapter for many of their players today? Sunday at Stamford Bridge, Branislav Ivanovic was the only injury to have once. John Terry had survived a midweek training ground accident. But, you know, Balak, Kalu and Anelka have only really re-established themselves in the last three games. Interesting, there are seven survivors from the last Chelsea team that Avram Grant picked in Moscow two years ago. Grant lost the Algerian midfield player Hassan Yemda to a hip injury just this morning. Papa Bouba Diop has been drafted in. Jamie O'Hara for the injured Mark Wilson is the only other change from the semi-final here. O'Hara and Kevin prince Boateng both carrying injuries of their own. Season Do they have one more surprise for us? Carlo Ancelotti bidding to follow in Gianluca Viali's footsteps. The only previous Italian to manage an FA Cup winning team. You know, there's three lone players in his starting 11 today. It's the last time that his group of players... Well, you never know, it is the FA Cup. And for the first time in its long history, the Cup gives us a final between the champions and the bottom club in the top flight. It's a mismatch in any other competition. But Portsmouth have defied bigger odds in recent weeks. They seem almost to take a special delight, a strength, if you like, from all the adversity that's fallen around their ears. Forward by Alex, beyond Drogba, dealt with by Aaron McQuainer and hooked downfield by Papa Bouba Diop, but Jim Beglin alongside me. Chelsea are already going better than they were a year ago. Well, yeah, I mean, this is an absolutely wonderful chance for Chelsea to add the double to their CV, and I think we're all expecting to see the same drive, the same focus that won them the Premier League, Clive. Can I make a case for Portsmouth? I can. I think they're just going to need the perfect day. I think you, you've just seen a little example there when the ball came to John Terry, the, the bubble. I heard Ray Wilkins speaking before the game that the pitch is softer, but it, it looks firm and bumpy to me. And you've seen it bobbling already. Did Dan falling over the ball, which doesn't help. Here's Steve Finnan, though. Picky on trying to leave it, Alex. The ball. Cover comes from Ivanovic. Well, it's the scruffiest looking pitch that we've seen amidst all the debate about the Wembley surface. But something had to be done. There were two matches played here last weekend. This is the third game to be played on it. Here's Ashley Cole. Nicola and Elka. And just to emphasise, in last year's final, Chelsea were already a goal down. Hello. Anelka. Crowded out by the massive fray. Papa Bouba Diop and the chance for Boateng to break. Here's Jamie O'Hara. Seeking out Frederick Piquion, who was in an offside position when the pass is played. 
Well, we spoke about John Terry and trying to play the ball to a team. Look at the little bobble just as it came to him. And that will make it awkward today, especially anything that goes back to the goalkeepers. Well, David James is calamity for this season happened against Chelsea at Fratton Park in March when a back pass bobbled over his swing at fresh air and resulted in the first Chelsea goal. Here's Diop. Ricardo Rocha. Aaron McQuayna. He needed more help there, Diop. He wanted to play the ball forward, but he ended up having to spin round and go backwards. Nothing was on, nobody moved for him at all. We just saw Jamie O'Hara as well, Clive. You know, as we know, he is playing just behind Frederick Pickion. Um, and, you know, with double stress fracture to his lower back. He's, he's been Lampard made ushering an Elka forward. Terrific challenge by McQuayna. Lampard! He wasn't very far away. Well, how, started to finish that. how good is he at just popping up and do, doing this sort of thing? I mean, Portsman, I'm sure, would have spoken about it. He has the little layoff, and then when it doesn't quite go in Elka's way, he's followed the play up, got it out of his feet really quickly to get a strike away with the right foot. And David James, I'm not sure he would have had it covered had it been inside the post. 27 goals already this season, 11 of those in his last nine games. Headed by Diop. Kevin Prince Boateng taking on Ivanovic. A bit of a doubt over Branislav Ivanovic in the days leading up to the final. He's been nursing a knee problem. But doubts over maybe half a dozen of the Portsmouth starting lineup. Balak now the anchor man in the absence of the injured Essien and Mikel. Ivanovic, Kalou, who's effectively keeping Joe Cole out of the team. Skin Mullins in towards Drogba, away by McQuayna. Picky on, so important to Portsmouth that he can get a hold of the ball and provide a platform for them to break up to him. Vital. I mean, he, it'll help get Portsmouth up the pitch a little bit. He was. Excellent at that against Tottenham in the semi-final. It was a real mischief about him and he held onto the ball extremely well. Chelsea will try to be patient. Portsmouth will try to be disciplined. Pattern for the game has been set already. Ashley Cole breaking forward. Quayna dealt with it at the expense of a throw in. And Elka has lofted it over Drogba, not quite far enough for Kalu. And Elka is still there, so too is Drogba. And he's the man for the occasion, six cup final goals. A tally that is, including the winner in the final three years ago and the equaliser 12 months ago we haven't had a really big underdog win in the final since wimbledon in 1988 everton's victory over manchester united 15 years ago was unexpected but hardly of the uh, David and Goliath legend, Wimbledon 88, second division West Ham 1980, the last great cup final shots. And a win for Avram Grant today would be comparable. And you know, Jim, I know you were injured, but you were part of the Liverpool party back in 88 when Wimbledon beat you. And there are echoes of the way that this team has had to pull together. Uh, you know, uh, uh, absolutely. Um, I mean, Liverpool thought they were going to do a second double, of course, that day as well. But um, I mean, Wimbledon showed great togetherness, great spirit. And I think the important thing for Wimbledon, Clive, which I'm sure Avram Grant will have had to instill in this play, you've got to believe, every single member of that team has got to believe they can pull this off. And if, if, if the teamwork is good enough, then maybe. Dindan's cross. Alexis clearance.
Pigil. Across the throw. Both teams attacking the ends of the stadium behind which their supporters are massed. There's no great hurry about things from Portsmouth, I know this as well. They're just slowing things down, taking their time. I'm sure Chelsea will want to kind of just pick the pace up. O'Hara. Able to dig the cross out on his unfavoured right foot. But what a story, Jamie O'Hara. On loan, don't forget, from Tottenham Hotspur. Nine Player of the Year awards for Portsmouth collected. But a stress fracture of his lower spine. He had a half at Everton last Sunday after five weeks out. Can he possibly last the 90? Alou won't catch that. No, but it gives the players more of a chance. You know, the, the semi-finals were playing here. They watered it so much that as soon as the ball hit the turf like that, anything over the top, it was away. But at least it's given people a chance to get there now. He didn't look as if he was moving too freely when he arrived at the stadium over an hour ago, I have to say. And clearly he is in some discomfort. He had an injection on Tuesday, didn't train on Wednesday, but so desperate to play, and Porch was so desperate to have him out there. Is it a gamble that will backfire? I was just watching him earlier on, Clive, as well, and Portsmouth had dropped a little bit deep as Chelsea mounted an attack. And he was doing doggies as Chelsea knocked it about, and I don't think that helped his cause either. Salomon Kalou. Kept him by Ivanovic for Lampard. Kalou had gone on. Watcher had to deal with it. Michael Brown. Aiden Mullins, who's uh, an emergency left back, he's a midfield player really by trade. One for Din down to chase, but it's far too close to Petr Cech. John, just looking at O'Hara, he, he's just had a little wave to the touchline. I don't know whether that he's in trouble or whether he's having a moan at a teammate, but I mean, we, we've seen this a few times this season, Clive, and I know Bobby Zamora was mentioned beforehand, but you just wonder how fit. Is he, you know, and, and is it harmful to the team? It, is it? Is it 10 men v 11? And Elka. Brought down by Dion. <laughs> He's a big unit, Papa Booba Dion. And you feel it when he challenges you. He wasn't on the team sheet this morning when he woke up. Hassan Yebda, the Algerian, failed a test on a hip injury mid-morning, and Diop was the man drafted in. They're talking again after last week's tiff. Now, whose turn is it? Remind me, Didier. Lampard, it's against the wall, comes for Ivanovic, trying to dig something out for Terry. Lampard back in there, a pointer away. Now a chance for a break, and Aruna Dindano can shift, but well covered by Ashley Cole. Yeah, just too much pace, Cole, for Dindano to get there, but it wasn't a great free kick, was it, from Lampard? He scuffed it a little bit into the wall. So nothing wrong with the uh, tussle between Terry and Piquillon and finished on the floor. Both were pleading their innocence. Brown. Halted by Lampard. The referee is getting a free kick to Chelsea there for Brown taking the ball into his own hands. Spiky carry to Michael Brown. He's. Uh, had his dust-ups with one or two big names in the game down the years, Xabi Alonso and Ryan Giggs, and a bit of an altercation with Ashley Cole a few years ago when uh, Brown was at Fulham, and 
He is uh, prone to that kind of moment. He is. He's got a very, very feisty nature, and they've had a little coming together already in the match. Lampard went to make a run a short time ago, and there was a little body check to stop him. And you would think Michael Brown's going to be the one to try and track most of his runs. He's more mobile than Diop. Diop it is who clears the lines this time. Terry first to it. Drop by. Just to sense that Chelsea are biding their time here. Lampard from range, oh, it's beautifully struck and hit the outside of David James's post. Wonderful hit by Frank Lampard against his England teammate. Well, he got the earlier sighter just a little wrong, and this time just to cross it again, which caused it to swerve away. I don't know, maybe the goalkeeper might have gotten there if it was low enough, but mighty, mighty close. It's a wonderful strike. Pompey have got to stop that, he's got to be shot. The height and the swerve on that ball, it was hit with such skill the way that he hits across the ball. It is a real art form. It sat up beautifully for him as well, but it just worked against him, the fact that he slightly got across it and caused it to spin away. Portsmouth, who denied him a final against his Uncle Harry. Drogba. Now Maluda. And Elka. Chelsea starting to motor. Nicolas Elka and James had to be smart. A little bit of surprise about the effort from Anelka. And that's our goal given by David Jones. That's a really good save. It's just, look at this, goes through the defender's legs. And sometimes goalkeepers don't allow for that, but he read it brilliantly to get down quickly. Terry and Ivanovic are both forward here. Taken by Maluda. Turned away by Boateng as far as Lampard. Now Balak. Ivanovic. Chelsea already with a measure of control. Very important that Portsmouth continue to pose some kind of a threat and don't get hemmed in. Well, I think for, for their the belief, for their confidence, I, th I think they have to, they have to be able to get into the opposition half and look as if they're going to carry a threat. 170 days in charge, 246 for Chelsea manager, but already talk of West Ham United next round, round Grant. Tom Tom drums have been beating. It's a rumour that's going round. But um, in both cases, uh, to Chelsea and Portsmouth, he's moved into the job from upstairs. And in both cases, his reputation has been largely enhanced during his time in charge. One of Portsmouth's saleable assets. I think he was stirred off the bench there, Clive, because I think he realises that Chelsea are now beginning to step it up and get a grip on things. More control, and the movement from Chelsea is beginning to stretch Portsmouth a little bit more now, and they're, they're finding a way in. Drop up. Claims handball and gets it. Chris Foy was well placed. That was Jop came in, watches the one that's just trying to hold him up, and just comes off. Papa Buba well, that part's had a turn, so I would imagine this will be Didier Drogba. Emery scoring a free kick from a little bit further out down at that end against Tottenham in the uh, Carling Cup final. Alex, the big centre half, can blast them. But Drogba appears to be at the front of the queue this time. Didier Drogba's going to be OK with Alex taking that free kick. That was incredible last week. It was ridiculous, having come out before him and said that the most important thing is the win for the team and to behave like that. Not right. He cheered up three goals later. Here's an L cut. Good cross. Well cut out by Aaron McQuainer. 
Quader and Rocha were excellent against Tottenham in the semi-final. Looks like they're going to have to repeat that excellence this afternoon. Lampard's corner is not the best, turn away by Brown. And then that can break, although he is all alone, all alone apart from four Chelsea defenders, that is. Now the support's arriving. Boitek. Picayon's in the centre. Ashley Cole seeing off the threat of Kevin Prince Boitek. He did well to get up and support, but that's hard work playing like that. You know, Dindan got it like that, and then he has to wait for the support, has to hold it up, and it's it's hard work for them trying to get up there quickly enough. Here is Dindan. Now to turn and face Cole. O'Hara. Throw it is Portsmouth. Finnan. O'Hara crowded out, but he's got the decision. Actually had three years with Chelsea as a schoolboy Jamie O'Hara. Quite literally a schoolboy between the ages of eight and eleven. Amazing. The age at which the modern football clubs pick up their talent. And he slid in rather wildly there on Michael Ballack. That's nice to see, Clive, because Ballack has just picked himself up and got on with it. And I think he's probably helped Jamie O'Hara's cause because that was not clever. It just seemed a little bit in the way he swung his left boot after leading with his right. Chris Foy took a very, very sympathetic view there. Kalou. Ivanovic. Salomon Kalou. Ivanovic. And now Lampard. And now Ivanovic. Cut back to Maluda. And here's Drogba. Fantastic block by McQueen and again. Two wonderful pieces of last-ditch defending by Aaron McQuayna. Do you know, that all started with Frank Lampard again, just in the inside right position, and Portsmouth had no idea he was there. Nobody picked him up whatsoever. And he was able to just link the move together from, from the right side and, and led to that. And you're right, McQueen has done ever so well to get a couple of blocks on it. I just thought Drogba had a little more room to aim at, you know, and I, I think... Had it been a better attempt for Drogba, I think he does find the, the corner. The Chelsea threat is growing. They were pinging the ball about nicely in the build-up to that chance for Didier Drogba. There didn't look much wrong with the pitch then. Overhit by Maluda. Well, Aaron McQuayna is a fascinating character because this summer he will... Captain South Africa at the uh, World Cup finals in his host country. He'll play with pride there, you could be sure of that, but no more than he did on that occasion, blocking first with his left leg and then with his body to deny uh, Didier Drogba. He's missing out on his 100th cap for his country today. Funnily enough, for South Africa have got a, a friendly against Thailand in uh, Nelspruit, one of the World Cup venues, but that 100th cap will come. And McQuayna will be a proud ambassador for his country in the summer. Dinda. It's done well to find a cross. And here's Boateng. And Piquillon was onside. Czech managed to claw it away. But what a chance. What a chance for Frederick Piquillon. Instinctive reaction. The whole of the goal to aim at. Uh, and it all started. He wasn't moving any on. But Jamie O'Hara closed it down. And he forced the Chelsea error to begin with. And when a shot comes in from Boateng, you think, well, it's got to go in from... From Piquion, I can't believe that he hasn't directed that in. He had so much of the net to aim for, and yet Czech manages to get a hand to it. Well, that's the wonder of the cup. That's what can happen. Knockout football, one punch can do it. It was uh, Portsmouth's only shot so far, but it was only the best chance of the game. Yeah, just... I can't believe he hasn't got any, you know, any sort of other touch, and I think it does go past Petr Cech. 
But you know, it all stems from his fell on the ball. Now, Jamie O'Hara wasn't moving too early on. He seems to have a little more of a spring in his step now. And just a little hard work from him in closing it down, and he forced the, the mistake. They made a rather tepid start to the semi-final. Certainly a very cautious start. And then suddenly they had a couple of breaks, started to worry Tottenham and realised they were in the game. Here's Kalu, though. Ivanovic, Balak, Terry, he worked it well, Maluda for Anelka to try his luck, blocked by Ricardo Rocha this time. Little moments like that, the blocks from McQuainer, the chance for Pickion. Just and, and feed the, the thought that it might just be their day. Well, look at the effect it's had on him, it gives you a lift. I mean, all of a sudden now the ball has been pinged in the feet and there is a tent, they're retaining it. Pickion, O'Hara, Pickion has gone on here. And that's a disappointing cross after an excellent move and O'Hara is suddenly involved in the game. I mean, both things hits it ever so well. I don't think it might have been going in, but the, the touch there, I mean, I mean... It's just too strong from him, and it's gone back towards the keeper. A lesser touch, and I'm sure it finds the far corner. It's just got to hit him on the shin. Anywhere, anywhere else, yeah. I mean, it was an instinctive save by Czech, it was a good save, but in effect, the ball bounced straight to him, and he just threw up a hand and knocked it away. And the chance had come and gone before Piquion realised it. Portsmouth are transformed just by that one moment. Dindan. Finnan. Here's Piquion. Now Brown. Here's Boateng again, got there ahead of Alex, can't quite keep it in. Yeah, it was difficult for Mullins because Brown sold him a little short with the pass. You know, there was even some speculation about his future after the Champions League exit in mid-March, mid-May, and he's on the verge of something that Jose Mourinho couldn't even give Robin Abramovich. Joining the modern double winning managers Bill Nicholson, Bertie Mee, Kenny Dalgleish, Sarlik Ferguson, and Arsene Wenger. Will Carlo Ancelotti add his name to that list? Chelsea throw. I guess you can understand as well what Ports are probably a tentative 8 0 for Chelsea against Wigan week just sat see what Chelsea are going to bring to them um, I know they've had that chance just a little more confidence is there Ashley Cole has got behind McQuainer great chance oh Kalu's hit the crossbar somehow and David James has grabbed it is that the biggest sitter ever missed in an FA Cup final Salomon Kalu goal gaping hits the crossbar I can't remember anything that beats that I'll tell you that is unbelievable and if you're old enough, Gordon Smith for Brighton, maybe, but what a chance. Just look at the Chelsea fullbacks as well, where they are. They're on the edge of the final third. Ivanovic on the right and Cole on the left. I mean, Ashley Cole was outstanding with Maluda, wasn't he, on the left hand side against Everton last year? And I'll tell you what, Cole's reaction wasn't, uh, wasn't too clever towards Kilo either. He was. Salomon Kalu missing a similar kind of opening, quality of opening, in a 
a Champions League that game that we covered earlier in the season at Stamford Bridge, and he finished up the goal hero that particular evening, but got to score. Got to score. Well, he's just got the underside of the ball, it's as simple as that. You know, he gets over it, he scores the goal, gets underneath it, and that, that's just an absolute shocker. Well, Ashley Cole is asking the same question that every Chelsea fan is, how? How have you missed? You shinned it. A little it's nil nil, but uh, goodness knows how, Jim. Yeah, unbelievable. Well, we saw Picky on at one end and now Kalu at the other. Of course, Chelsea with many more efforts on goal than, than their opposition so far, and I think he'll be um, a little unhappy with things as well, seeing that go astray. Ancelotti. Use of the arms, he's just had a little little pull on him. Arms, arms, thigh, <laughs> manhandled him. Flora Baluda towards the head of Terry off the woodwork again. Lampard and Terry now have struck the frame of the goal. Kalu beat himself as three times Chelsea have hit the woodwork. John Terry, the latest. I remember saying something similar when we did the Tottenham semi-final. Could this be Portsmouth's day? Great ball in from the Luda, wonderful leap from Terry, and he heads it away from the goalkeeper as well. Very unlucky to see that strike wood again. Rocha, Mahara, Diop. And never mind the state of the Wembley pitch, what about the state of that Wembley goal? It been battered and bruised in these opening 30 minutes. It's Chelsea's, uh, it's uh, Portsmouth's best defender at the moment, that goal throw. Maluda. <laughs> Nothing wrong with Jock. Portsmouth get the throw in. Can't keep riding, you look like that though, Clive. Standing off, letting Chelsea shoot, let him get in behind as Ashley Cole did for Kalu, and then Terry unchallenged with the header. <laughs> what is he keeping note? Is that the chances he's riding down then? Might need a bigger book. Portek. He's asked a lot of Mullins. Trusting his skill and losing it. A little bit lucky to get the throw in. <laughs> Ashley Cole. Did he drop bar? Now Nicola and Elka. Again, trying his luck from Rage, and this time deflected off the point and behind for a corner. Well, again, I think David James is suggesting the gap could have been closed down a little bit. There's far too much room for him, and yes, it's come off McQueen and gone for the corner, but the keeper was static. Missing the presence of uh, the injured Mark Wilson and Hassan Yemter in that area. Maluda with the corner. It is by Piquion. Given against Michael Ballack, just uh, hooked in down in the face, a little bit of afters, but uh, getting a ticking off from Kevin Prince Boateng, and now his friends are joining in too. It's been a sort of Dunkirk spirit fostered by Avram Grant, all of this together, and, and so they should be because you know, it's the spirit that's got them through this competition to this stage. I mean, there's just a little bit of Use of the hands then, and they get the free kick, Portsmouth. Now, Michael Michael Brown just kind of made his way into it, and he and Balak ended up having words together. And then 
I don't know why he raised his hand to both things. It doesn't need to go there. No cards. Puts the front. Porte. I think you're right, Clive. I mean, you mentioned Mark Wilson before. I mean, he, he played very much the anchor role um, in, in the semi final, deep in midfield. And then you had the likes of Michael Brown and Yebda kind of busy just operating around him. And I think the fact that O'Hara is a little more advanced, I think it's taken away from that. There's another one from both things, just leaned into Ivanovic to get the free kick. Days at the office this season, even against one or two of the Premier League strugglers, defeat at Wigan, draw at Hull, a late winner at Burnley. They needed a late penalty to beat Portsmouth at Stamford Bridge just before Christmas, but then nobody scored nearly as many late Premier League goals than Chelsea. They do generally find a way and they've tried to keep their heads and take their time to open Portsmouth up. Here's Pickion breaking in behind them, and it has Dindan in support. It's Frederick Pickion, Aruna Dindan, Mitch hit it completely, it's all slid in. Alex cleared, but it was another chance for Portsmouth. Here's O'Hara. That's a really good chance too, you know, he's just mishit it. And it was Ashley Cole who was just loitering behind his teammates, and he kept him on side. Boateng after the ball had gone and Balak's in some discomfort here and Boateng is going to have the discomfort of playing the rest of the game with a yellow card to his name. But Portsmouth are certainly making Chelsea think by foul means or fair they're staying in this game and that patience we've talked about from Chelsea is now being tried. He was late, he was always like to get a yellow card like that. I'm not sure the malice was in it, Clive, but it was mistimed. He was very slow in getting there. The ball had been poked away by Ballot. It did steam in a bit, I think we'll see. Does, yeah, and it's a nasty one too, you know. He's just caught him ankle, lower shin area. And he's caught him with the studs. That is nasty. Balak hasn't got up yet. Well, every time uh, an England player sneezes at the moment, we all say a national prayer, and a German nation may just be joining in unison to offer one at the moment, because that's their World Cup captain who's lying on the Wembley turf. Giuliano Belletti would be the obvious replacement from here. But Michael Balak, who has generally been a substitute for Chelsea at Wembley during his time with the club. He's in trouble. This was a second good chance for Portsmouth before, Jim. Yeah, it's on his left leg in the end, Dindan, and he just doesn't hit it well. But look how deep Ashley Cole is, and he's the one that caused it. You know, if he's in line with his teammates, I think they prevent that. Pickyond as well, just feeds a simple little ball. Yes, he does have to backpedal a little bit, and Ashley Cole is trying to close him down, but it's just a complete and utter miskick from Dindan. His movement was good, but his shot wasn't. I think he kicked it from one foot onto the other. Well, Balak gingerly was back on his feet. If it's impact, I think he's got every chance of carrying on. If he's just turned it over a little bit in the challenge, he might have a problem. Might have to, you know. It's a savage challenge. The 
Well, he's wincing as he walks off, but he... Looks to me as if he may just return. Well, I think Didier Drogba has finally got to the front of the queue for a free kick. It's Drogba! But he says nothing. David James is getting on with it. I mean, it looked into me straight away. Is it? Yes, it is. Is it just? And it's only a corner. Maluda. And how long did it take us, television, the dreaded television, to prove that was a goal? 15 seconds. I mean, what a hit this is. You know, is it a hit? I think so. He does get a touch on it, David James. Oh, inconclusive, maybe not the whole of the ball over the hole, and maybe I jumped the gun a little bit. Or well, maybe it's taken us 30 seconds to prove it might not have been a goal. But either way, why on earth do we not use the technology? It was a fantastic save by James. So not the ball onto the crossbar. Lampard. Here's Cole. Just remembering Clive as well last year against Everton. Maluda scored only from range. And then that wasn't given and that was over the line. I couldn't tell last year, just looking at it first off on this occasion, I honestly thought it had gone over. But you know, it turns into a, just an outstanding save from David James. That was a vital touch he got in it. And the fourth time Chelsea have hit the woodwork. But, but your first instincts were the ball had bounced down over the line, and that would still be my instincts in the replay. But I repeat, even, even if we show the replay to a fourth official and he finds that it's inconclusive, OK, we can carry on. But why on earth, when the technology is there, on something as basic as did the ball cross the line, will FIFA refuse to look at that evidence? Not FA a, Cup final. Yeah, not a new experience to, to Portsmouth either. The quarter final against Birmingham, of course, as well, which was, was highlighted again before kick -off. I agree. I think on, on whether the ball was over the line or not, I think it should be reduced. And leave it there. Leave the technology there. Yeah. Alex. Maluda. Well, Chelsea are pressed and pressed. Also, they've had a couple of real sides of their goal. Chelsea certainly could mount a very strong argument for deserving to be in front, but they're not. Not yet. Ivanovic, Enelka. Drop by weight to the far post. Did he exit? again James came on his feet it did I think well what is going on between McQueen and Steve Finnan here between them they just get it hopelessly wrong and allow Drogba to get in and yeah it does hit the post again it's just gone through the little hole as David James goes down to try and smother it gets a little bit of luck in coming off Finnan is that five no five times I think Chelsea might be out just measuring the dimensions of those goals at half time they drop bar say between you, you post, and as for you, crossbar. Nil, nil. Well, it was the opposite end from uh, Jeff Hurst and that Russian linesman. It's uh, Peter Turf, you can call it that. It's still pretty much the same place as the old stadium was. Goal scored at Wembley has ever scored. Offside.
For all, for all that, though, Clive, for all the chances Chelsea have had and all the pressure David James has been under, Kalu will be feeling worst of all out there, I'll tell you. Balak struggling, by the way. He really is limping heavily now. And even though half-time is imminent, Giuliano Belletti is stripped off and ready to come on. Here's Terry. Held it well to get a foot to that, couldn't quite control it, it was overhead from his skipper. Frederic Piquillon. And not much joy for Michael Ballack at Wembley, but I wonder what the greater repercussions are for his World Cup chances. <laughs> Mr. World Cup final through suspension, let's not let's forget. Surely he's not going to miss some finals now through an injury picked up in the English Cup final. Well, I just hope it's not ligament damage, Clive. We hope, hopefully it is an impact thing and, you know, it'll be a week, maybe ten days, two weeks max. This is probably Giuliano Belletti's Chelsea farewell. He played the last half hour last weekend at Stamford Bridge. The feeling is that the Brazilian international will seek past as new after this season. But now he's on hoping to add an FA Cup winner's medal to his World Cup and Champions League winner's medal collection. Flora Maluda. Frank Lampard. Here's Branislav Ivanovic, and now Kalou, and Ivanovic has gone on, and he's onside, headed away by McQuayna. Kalou had a swing in it, Ivanovic was behind the line, balls out, goal kick. And no wonder he's smiling. He's got the fates on his side today, David James, some wonderful defending. He does really well, doesn't he, Ivanovic? I think he and Cole are, are, are a threat from the wider positions. He does all he can because James forced him to get it in. When it comes to Kalu, well, it's very awkward and he has to go at it spectacularly and can't control it. The only survivor in today's lineup from the team that started the final two years ago is fourth FA Cup final, David James. And you get a real sense of him enjoying it, and no wonder because. He's still got a clean sheet to his name, and Chelsea have hit his woodwork five times. I think Avram Grant will be delighted to get them in, though, because the compactness we saw from Portsmouth in the semi-final has not been there. Chelsea are finding a way through much, much more than, than Spurs were. Here they go again. Maluda. Cole. And Elka. That was some block you got a kick. That was some block from McQuayna. We saw a couple from, uh, from Drogba earlier in the match, and he's done it again. He's just thrown himself at this, because this is headed for a corner. Going to help things again. Well, they scored eight last weekend, seven a fortnight before that. Thirteen times this season they've scored four or more goals in a game, Chelsea. Only Birmingham City and Inter Milan have stopped them scoring. And Portsmouth possibly continue to keep them at bay because Chelsea could have had four or five already. Aiden Mullins. But it's something for Avram Grant to cling to at half time in the dressing room the fact that things are on their side. They've had huge breaks. I mean, just look at that look. I think he's thinking, dear, oh dear. How are we still nil-nil? Almost hiding behind his hand. Belletti. Ivanovic. Headers by Finnan, volleys by Ashley Cole, and that's wide. Doesn't even hit the post. Five times they've hit the frame of David James's goal. Very unlucky, isn't it? The Lampard would just swerve the wrong way. Cole, brilliant. Kalu, shocking. John Terry, wonderful lead, great direction. Very unfortunate not to see a drop in. 
and then great save in the end from David James, not quite over the line from Drogba, and then Drogba again with the little poke. Incredible. I don't think it did cross the line, did it? I don't think it did. I must admit, I, I, I think um, I gave it away, didn't I? As soon as it happened, I thought it's in, it's, it's over, but not quite. And well done, because uh, I was waiting for the flag to go up, but the assistant, spot on. Goes by the name of Sean Proctor Green, the man who got it right. Chelsea very nearly, nearly got it right time and time again. He got it horribly wrong. Time and time again, they threatened to score. Denied by Aaron McQuayna, by David James, and by his goal frame. But Portsmouth have had a couple of sights goal too. It's been as absorbing a goal as half as you would ever hope to see. But at half time in the FA Cup final, sponsored by Eon, it's Chelsea nil, Portsmouth nil. Portsmouth were officially relegated on the eve of the semi final here. Not only did they win that game, they finished the season with their pride intact. Only uh, two defeats in the last seven matches. Not lost a game by more than the odd goal since March now. But uh, no wonder with the kind of fortune that they've enjoyed so far this afternoon. Well, I know Adam Graham, once the nine point deduction kicked in, Clive, he got his players together and he asked them, Look, how do you want to approach the rest of the season? Do you want to kind of pack in or do you want to commit yourself to it? And, and they have, and they've had you know, wonderful spirit as a result, but they don't look together today, they don't look organised, they're not communicating well enough, and there's holes in things defensively. Chelsea have been far superior, and you would think if things carry on like this, it is only a matter of time. If. David James remains officially unbeaten in this game. And here's Kevin Prince Porte. An unnecessary piece of extravagance, but uh, free kick conceded by Salomon Kalou and Michael Brown. Just a little nudge as he tried to pinch the ball away from Kalou. And now an opportunity to get some of the bigger men up. McQueen has certainly ventured. Who scored the winner in that third round replay we were talking about? It's actually towards Boateng, who's challenged by Dropper, helping out in defence. It's a bit of a barge. It was clumsy. This is Brown. Boateng still down. The referee's had to stop the play as a result of that. And did get Dropper as centre forwards go is one of the best defenders I've seen. He usually is very effective for his team when he goes back. But uh, as Aaron McQuayna is arguing with Chris Foy, that was a rather clumsy challenge by the Chelsea striker. Well, I just wonder, is it, is it head on head or is it, is it the arm from Drogba? It might be a little bit of, little bit of both. Could, could be the head in the end, maybe Drogba has just clipped him. That's why he's, he's concerned about Boateng on the ground. Forearm in the back, though. One of those challenges which sometimes penalise in other areas of the field. It's uh, Kevin Prince Boateng, the uh, Berliner who arrived at Portsmouth from Tottenham in uh, August and who has uh, just taken up an invitation from the Ghanaian FA. He does have clearance now from FIFA to be a part of their World Cup plans. And he may have joined the Ghanaian squad just in time to possibly face his brother, Jerome, who uh, is a German international and their paths may just meet during the summer. Extraordinary story. But it looks like he's going to be OK. Tells to give the ball back to Portsmouth. No challenge on Belletti. This is Lampard. So by watching the uh, bounce of the ball carefully, McQuayna couldn't clear the first time of asking, but then got it away. Lampard straight to Diop. O'Hara. There's Mullins. Boateng. O'Hara. It's 
that kind of breaking up of the attack in midfield by Chelsea, which Portsmouth have not been able to do so far. Cole is getting forward once again. And Elka. Two players seeking to win a League and Cup double. With a second club, Ashley Cole and Nikola and Elka would be a unique achievement. Double winners with Arsenal in different years. Now seeking to become double winners with Chelsea and Ashley Cole seeking a sixth FA Cup winners medal more than any player in the history of the competition. Terry on Piquion. Mahara. Dindan. Now Finnan. Good match again from Terry. Just leaving Piquion under the ball, and this time the referee spotted it, penalised it. Because he just kind of uses the right arm to just shove him away and then get his head on it. Biggest man in the penalty area has been joined by Aaron McQuayna. Oh, a little bit of space here for Kevin Prince Boateng. Well, it was a spectacular attempt. He doesn't think it was far away. Well, the inquest has begun. Ivanovic and Drogba, Alex are all, all communicating with each other. What happened there? He's just peeled off Boateng. To be honest, he had an awful lot to do. Wasn't that far away in the end, you know. Great control, and then to hit it with the left foot and the follow-up. That's not that far away, and that's difficult to execute. Both Boateng and Dindan are very gifted forwards. Just a nagging doubt in Chelsea minds. A threat from Portsmouth has been muted this afternoon, but it is there. Disappointing one though, Clive. They did well to win it back between Diop and O'Hara, and I didn't know, I think the apologetic, the apologetic hand went up, and he just hung it up for the goalkeeper. Didn't give Boateng or Picky on a chance. These two clubs when they met at Fratton Park in uh, March. Flora Maluda was uh, guilty of a challenge which sent Ricardo Rocha to hospital. Tommy Smith had his nose broken by another flailing arm from uh, one of the Chelsea substitutes today, Daniel Sturridge. Dindan. Trying to peel away from Cole. And Elka climbed well. Maluda. Drop it away. Since he hasn't really got going since the break. Well, it looks to me the best thing that happened to Portsmouth was half time. Because they look as if they've sorted themselves out. And yeah, Chelsea just have eased off. Botek. His extravagant skills becoming more of a factor in the final. Alex across to halt his progress this time. Ivanovic clearing, Lampard trying to tidy up. Valetti taking every available moment. 
Drogba. Only for O'Hara. Certainly Portsmouth looking a bit more assured. but O'Hara picked the pocket of Paletti and this is Jamie O'Hara Cole came across Boateng seen off by the joint forces of Ivanovic and then Lampard hey. Maluda here's Finnan strong bold run from fullback from Steve Finnan Aruna Dindan it's got beyond Paletti Dindan goes down Conceded by the Chelsea substitute, Juliana Belletti, won by Aruna Dindan. And Avram Grant's Portsmouth have the chance to take the lead in the final. Well, he was clumsy before that as well, but Dindan does him easily. Don't stick the leg out, whatever you do. Gets nowhere near the ball, Belletti, and it's a stone waller for me. And the reaction of the Chelsea players said everything. Kevin Prince Boateng scored here from the spot five weeks ago to clinch the semi-final victory over Tottenham Hotspur faced by uh, Pedicek saved a Louis Saha penalty at Goodison a couple of months back this is the cup final Boateng saved by Czech historic moment for Pedicek only the third man ever to save an FA Cup final penalty Kevin Prince Bertrand denied. Poor spot kick. He goes down the middle. Very good save from Petr Cech because he committed himself to the right but managed to get his legs to it. But that is not a good penalty. Dave Besant from John Aldridge in 1988. Mark Crossley from Gary Lineker in 1991. And in 2010, Petr Cech from Kevin Prince Bertrand. Three penalties saved in the history of the FA Cup final. But a corner to Portsmouth. Taken by Brown, and here is Boateng. Turned away by Terry. And all of a sudden, Salomon Kalou's first half miss doesn't seem quite so bad. But let him reprieve. He just had a shaky spell before that, Clive. He, you know, he was waiting for things to happen, Belletti, and then Dan gets past him here. Don't stick a leg out, whatever you do. And he commits himself, and the referee had to give it. That is not good. Down the middle, he scuffs it, he almost plays it into the ground, and there's no real pace on it anyway, and straight down the middle. Didier drop back. Free kick. Well, yes. Pedicek actually started this season with two penalty saves on this ground in the shootout at the end of the Community Shield against uh, Manchester United, save from both Ryan Giggs and Patrice Evra that August afternoon, and here we are in May, and a, another critical save by Petacek. Chelsea needed a kickstart in this second half, they may have just got it. They may have just got it. Well, as goal as finals be, it's been a cracker. There's never been a goalless FA Cup final here at Wembley. Six have gone into extra time before a goal's been scored. <laughs> Portsmouth fans certainly haven't been silenced. <laughs> It'll be Didier drop bar. It's in! Hit the post and went in, but it's in. Didier Drogba and long, long last for Chelsea. And is that the first of many? James Beaton, for once, his post just helped the ball Most into the goal. Sixth time in the match, Chelsea have struck the woodwork, but this time a goal for Didier Drogba, another cup final goal for Didier Drogba. 
but just look at the wall. There's a gap in the wall, and David James, crucially, takes a step to the right. All his weight is now on the right side, and he can't get back, and that's pinpoint precision. But look at the wall. That's the problem to begin with. There's a gap in the wall, and it's undone Portsmouth. Delight for everybody in forward with Chelsea Football Club. Thanks to Didier Drogba's sixth Wembley goal and his seventh cup final goal. Extraordinary record. In League Cup and FA Cup finals, seven goals for Didier Drogba. It's a wonderful strike. And you're right, he does love this place, but how many times do you see it? A goalkeeper just tries to guess one way, can't get back, and check how vile could that penalty save be. And has the game finally turned? A game of dramatic moments. And finally, a game with a goal. Here's Dropper. Brown forward. Boateng, nobody on the field more wants a goal than Kevin Prince Boateng. You know, after he missed it as well, he had to be lifted back up, Clive. He was absolutely dejected as he lay there. He knew, I think, not just the fact that he was saved, but he hadn't taken it well. Next five or ten minutes are everything for Portsmouth. Brown with the throw in. It's Drogbar who's back there. Lampard hooks it away. McQuayna. Might come here for Tindan. Ooh, he just couldn't bring it under his spell. He knows it was a chance. Well, if the first touch is good, then there's every chance he's going to get a second on it. Or, you know, he could have just tried to flick it as it came down. Just go first time. Instead, it's Nicola Anelka for Chelsea. And Ashley Cole is supporting him. Anelka. I think the ball's out of play. Go kick. Well, what can you say about Didier Drogba? 2005 League Cup Final, 2007 League Cup Final, 2007 FA Cup Final, 2008 League Cup Final, 2009 FA Cup Final, 2010 FA Cup Final. I was just looking at it again, Clive. You know, Jamie O'Hara could maybe stand in front of Aluda, but maybe, maybe it was just that little bit high enough um, on the wall. That's somebody been there. They not have been able to deal with it anyway. Very, very good strike. Ivanovic popping up from nowhere, and Kalou! So close. Well, do you know, the one thing in his defence here is that he has to take it quickly, but it's a wonderful break from Ivanovic again, just to provide that outlet, and when it's fired into him, it's quickly at him. Good chance, though. Well, they've been used to seeing their team score goals with a ruthless abandon once they've got started on occasions this season. And they will be expecting more now. But one may just be enough. Lampard. Ivanovic. Ran it, showed too much of it to Ricardo Rocha, and here's Jamie O'Hara looking to get Freddie Picky on down the centre. Terry calm and controlled. That's a tough ball as well. O'Hara trying to pick uh, Picky on, you know, on his own up there. I think he'd be better off just trying to retain the ball and just help Portsmouth get more bodies into the opposition half. Good defending by Hayden Mullins. David James watching it carefully. Here's Maluda. Thumb to the ground by Well, 
the spirit and resistance that Portsmouth have shown in the last few months is going to be sorely tested now. Maluda. Didn't get round Diop, it is a long way round Papa Bouba Diop. And he's got a free kick. Well, is it too early to fear for Portsmouth? Um, well, I, I, I don't think so just yet. It's, it's um, it, you know, something's still there for them to get a lucky break. They, they just need to now just settle everything down again, <laughs> make sure they keep things right at the back. Um, and just keep plugging away, Clive. I mean, they, they know they had a couple of chances in the first half. W why not again? They just have to keep at it, pers persevere. Well, that Dunkirk spirit will be broken here by Didier Trompa's goal. Piquillon. Brown. Mullins. McQueen in depth. Terry making life difficult for him, too difficult. He took Din down out as he went on for Finn's return ball. Din down clutching his head. It was John Terry who blocked him. But he's certainly making a meal of it, Din down. He's holding his head now. I'm not sure whether John Terry catches him. High, does he as he eases off? Yeah, he's, he's just basically checked him. It was a pretty nasty body check. I'm not sure it caused quite that much damage, but it was a very cynical challenge by the Chelsea skipper. Stood his ground and actually moved towards Dindan. It's Dindan who crosses, headed away by Ivanovic, who was heavily criticised by Martin O'Neill for a different kind of tackle on James Milner here. In the semi final, Terry. Throw in by Brown. Ivanovic's header. Cleared by Lampard. Not sure that McQuainer really wanted that from James. Kalu couldn't keep it in. Well, I think James is just finding that out now. <laughs> I think McQuainer's had a quick word. but do have one or two attacking options on the bench. John Utaka, the Nigerian who played in the uh, 2008 final, the uh, Algerian left winger, Nadia Belhaj is fit on the bench too. Kalu, over James and drop bar, Maluda will pursue it. Holds off Finnan. Ashley Cole popping up in the box. Good cover from Papa Buba Diop on the ball cleanly and wins himself a free kick. Yeah, great challenge from Booba Diop and a wonderful burst from Ashley Cole as well to get in position. And if you're looking for a Wembley goal, why not Nwankwo Kanu? A man who's winning goals in the semi-final and final here two years ago brought so much glory course this way. He's 33 now. But he did score a very famous hat-trick for Arsenal at Stamford Bridge. It was a good few years ago now, 1999. Been a bit of a skeleton from the Chelsea closet if Abraham Grant turns to him. It's not quite happened for Piquion today. He was wonderful against Tottenham, but never really got involved today. And it's true, that chance that came to him, that check saved in the first half. Um, it just hit him really, didn't it? He couldn't really direct it where he would have liked. Ivanovic. Kalu looking for Lampard. Now Kalu again. Mullins sticking to it. Picky up. Free kick given. Frederick Picky on in uh, 
trouble now. Two minutes and 39 seconds, all that elapsed between this Kevin Prince Boateng's penalty saved by Pedacek and this Didier Drogba's free kick and what must it have meant to poor Boateng when that flew in? Could have been me. O'Hara, good turn by uh, Boateng, but Lampard was strong enough. Here goes Kalou. Michael Brown got to him and got the throw in. Maluda. Perhaps that'll be Kalou's last contribution, Clive. You know, not been his day either. Had an unbelievable miss in the first half and not quite worked for him in the second. And he has played with much more confidence of late. More freedom, Kalou, but not quite today. Well, Joe Cole had to watch last year's final with us. He was injured. He was subbed at half-time in the 2007 final by Jose Mourinho. Came on as a substitute here in the uh, League Cup final defeat to Spurs in Abraham Grant's day, and he's coming on as a substitute here at a, a critical time, probably more for him than for his club, in truth. He is a man who has only got one foot on the plane to South Africa, and with uh, Fabio Capello in attendance, Joe Cole has got 20 minutes on another big stage to prove the point that he was making in the morning papers, that he was the fittest player at Chelsea when they were all tested out during the week. Smith are looking a bit weary now. Yeah, and Joe Cole seems to have kind of taken a more central role. Looks as if Maluda has now gone left and, and Elt is coming right. Maluda has found Drogba and Drogba has found space. Stopped by James. Joe Cole. Brown got to him. Last ditch defending. Still a chance for Giuliano Belletti. Well, the big chance was for Joe Cole. It was, and Drogba, Drogba had a really good one as well, but, you know, James is just smothering him. He could have actually just tried to put it inside, gone for goal, James does well. Then he does the simple thing, is it Finnan? Finnan possibly gets the block on it. Maybe Brown too, and Belletti in the end. I think he's trying to say, come on, guys, you've got to concentrate, hang in there. That's just what they're doing, they're hanging on, really. In fact, that's not the case, Clive. I, you know, I thought... Cole was going to play centrally, he's not. He's playing kind of right side, and Elka left, Drogba in the centre. Ivanovic, Drogba, here is Cole. <laughs> Hasn't played for England since September 2008, Joe Cole. Drogba towards Nelka, but just a little too much weight on it. That would have been some reduction if he could have got a clean strike away on that one, because he set the move up as well and playing the pass out the drop but to begin with. As Chelsea future is shrouded in mystery too. Got the ball way beyond Cole, well here comes John Utaka. Tucker by name, and he's also a forward. He's been a regular in the last month or so. Maybe a little disappointed not to have made the uh, starting lineup. Kevin Prince Boateng here got himself fit. Fit enough, sadly, from his point of view, to miss the critical penalty. And Utaka, the uh, Nigerian who crossed for Kanu's winner two years ago, comes on in his place. Yeah, straight swap to, he'll operate down the left-hand side now for Portsmouth. When you look back on that challenge as well on Michael Ballack, which caused him to depart the pitch, Clive, and it didn't get any better, did it, any time you saw it since, and, and on another day, and I think the way he reacted as well, maybe he was a little fearful of seeing red, because it was, it was a bad one.
Can Portsmouth lift themselves one more time? Rocha seeking out Butaka. Seen off by Ivanovic. Cole. Nelka. Lampard making a run to his right. Nicola Nelka's carried it all the way. By the way, I thought for a moment he might have played the simple one to Joe Cole, who was in space just to his right, but he really caught hold of this. But again, it's one of those slightly across it and swerving away. Approaching the last quarter of an hour, it's still only 1 0. The cup finally, which Chelsea hit the woodwork five times in the first half before eventually taking the lead through Didier Drogba just two and a half minutes after Portsmouth had had a penalty saved. Mullins. Watch up. They've got to go long because Chelsea have got everybody covered. They can't play it through midfield, Portsmouth. And Chelsea just mop it up again. I think it's just a question of stirring themselves, really. Boateng's reaction to being substituted almost merciful in the end, really. The dream has turned into a nightmare for him and others around him. You know, crisis is an overused word in football, but this is a club that has been and may still be on the verge of folding once or twice this season. Joining the Bradford Park Avenues and Newport counties that actually went out of business for a while. Given away by Utaka. Maluda. Here's Lampard. This was a good day to bury all the bad news of they could have stirred themselves. Anelka, Lampard stepping into the Portsmouth box, but just unable to control the ball. And Chelsea just unable to put Portsmouth away. And they're still in it here with Dinda. O'Hara starts to be too much of Dinda. Well picked off and seen by Jim Terry. He's running again, O'Hara, but a moment ago he was actually just stood on his own, bent over as if maybe his, his, his day was up, but there he goes again, closing now. Finnan. This is Lampard. Maybe just bobbled and sat up a little bit more than he'd hoped. Couldn't control the volley. It's a tough one. You see that so often. It bounces just before he can get there. But he does really well in checking his run and coming back inside to pick up the pass from Anelka. Not easy. Still they sing. Still they believe. Some of them anyway. of the currency of this competition. In the sense that even at 1-0 down, Portsmouth needs something like a miracle to stir themselves, to rouse themselves, to find that moment to get back into the game. And Elka. Too long for Drogba. Yeah, and the way it's looking at the moment, Clive, for Pompey, I think they're going to need a free kick or a corner, something like that, because, you know, they can't quite get up there and, and they, can't, they can't get it to pick you on and tackle and get down and, and keep it. Here's Utaka. Trying to get on the outside of Ivanovic, who was always in control of that situation. Well, that looks slightly more promising for a while. Did well, Utaka, to a point. Maybe should have looked for help. His Chelsea career officially began here with that Community Shield success via the penalty shootout against Manchester United in August. Him. 
as they were to see this hitting go here a year ago. Carlo Ancelotti, a similar kind of football man, has proved a more than able successor. Well, here comes Canu, who has been mainly a substitute this season, hasn't played at all for a month, but he got those winners against West Bromwich Albion and Cardiff City on this ground two years ago. Maluda, though, into the path of Joe Cole. And McQuainer somehow deflects the ball back to his keeper. That was well defended, in the chest. Just to retain possession. Diop under pressure from Drogba. I think he was clipped. It's a pretty dramatic dive under the uh, nose of the referee. Here come not one, but I think two changes for Portsmouth. Canu is certainly going to come on in place of uh, Papa Buba Diop. Going to see Nadia Belhaj, who's been out since March the 20th with a hamstring problem. The man whom England may be seeing in their um, second group game of the World Cup finals because he is uh, an Algerian international. He'll actually miss the opening game of the finals through suspension, but he'll be free to face England in Cape Town on June the uh, 18th. And he's got pace. Good left foot. O'Hara short to Brown. First touch for Nadia Belhaj. Easy enough for Alex. Finnan. Seeking out Belhaj again. The only cross is a difficult one. Oh, what a chance for Canu, was it? No, it's Dendan. Just eluded him. Aruna Dendan. But you know why? Because he thinks John Terry is going to get there in front of him. Wonderful first-time ball from Bell Hatch. What a what a contribution that is. And John Terry does get a little touch on it. That's why it's a corner, and that's why Dindan missed it. Last ten minutes. O'Hara headed away by Lampard. Finnan. Maluda got underneath it a little bit. Belletti helps it on its way. Only as far as Steve Finnan. in with a chance to cross again. Alex up in front of drop, but they both go for the same ball. Ooh, it was a bit of a swing at the ball from John Utaka. He didn't begin to make a decent contact. Nervous Chelsea. Yeah, this is a great ball in though from Belhaj. First time, side footer, and John Terry. Oh, he's just come off his knee, but Dindan thinking he's going to miss it and going to get on it. And in the end, how fortunate is that? Inches. is never quite enough, however dominant you are in a game. No foul, down goes Ashley Cole, Aruna Dindan has it though, Piquion can't quite gather it in. Cole in a heat for the moment. I think he wanted a free kick then, didn't he, for this on Ashley Cole? Just followed through. Why is that not a foul? It should be. In a way, that's a foul. But Carlo Ancelotti had the best view of all. Oh. And, and, and I didn't see that bit. He stood all over his foot. Well, Cole's only just got back from injury. It's only his fourth game back. Okay. Yeah, Chelsea could just do a little bit more possession again, though, because you know 
with the changes Portsmouth have found a little bit of a spark and, and they're having a go they're determined not to go out without a fight and Chelsea just need to now use their experience and hang on to it for a while headed by McQuayna Para forces it back Aaron McQuayna to clear again Terry and Picky are locked together in the position goes Chelsea's way yeah, given by the assistant Chelsea's chance of a first double should come within a couple of months of their chastening reunion with Jose Mourinho. The uh, Inter Milan experience was a vivid reminder of how things once were at the bridge, I suppose. All those headlines, all those trophies, but some Chelsea fans may have found themselves pining for the old days then, but if the new Chelsea can claim a double, it will be only something that even Jose never managed. It may be done in a manner of play that Jose never manages the Chelsea boss Bell Hatch though for Portsmouth and it's another searching cross and it almost comes for Dindan again as Utakaru rose in the centre and couldn't make headed contact Dindan who followed up on the far side By still the way, searching what a source he's been that's two absolutely delicious balls he's put across just waiting to be attacked. He could have committed a little bit more, I think, Utaka. Dindan, it's awkward from because it's bounced quite high. But great, great balls in from Bel Hadj. Quenchable spirit of Portsmouth Football Club. Headed from Rocha, though. The four for Didier Drogba. Trying to play in Anelka. Again, the Portsmouth defence gather around and see off the danger. Bel Hadj once more. Well, he would certainly have been a first choice had he had any football, but he's been in Doha, in Qatar, in the Middle East, with the Algerian national squad, nursing an injury. And now with a chance to put it to bed, but defeated by the pitch, maybe. Now, yeah, Roch is relieved. It's a challenge by an elk on him, and then just a little miscontrol. Terry's header. Forced on by Lampard. Here's Joe Cole. Didier Drogba, Cole with Lampard available. Down goes Lampard, penalty. And Chelsea will have a chance from the penalty spot to surely break Portsmouth's resistance once and for all. And presumably no argument between Drogba and Lampard. It's Michael Brown who sticks the leg out across Frank Lampard. And to be honest, I think he's happy to take it. I think once he feels the contact, I think, you know, yeah, I'm going to go down, and I think the referee has to give it. Brown penalised. Lampard picks himself up. His, four, his uh, England teammate will face him. And Frank Lampard, who got the winner in last season's FA Cup final, has a chance to clinch victory in this season's missed it two penalties missed in an FA Cup final that's never happened before and Portsmouth are still alive here well he's not the only one is he Kevin Prince I mean you would have thought and it just makes you think with the way this day has gone Clive you just wonder whether there is one last kind of hooray left in uh, in Pompey and just in case you want a quiz question for the pub tonight that is the first time a penalty has been missed in an FA Cup final at Wembley it did happen once way back in 1913 in a final at Crystal Palace but not even a save required that time down goes Dindan Ashley Cole got the ball he's normally such a clean striker the ball as well but he dragged it didn't he Lampard it wasn't wasn't a good connection Maluda Here's Lampard. Try that one too.
wonder what he'll have to say about it. I should have taken it, that's what he's probably saying. I mean, David James has guessed the right way, but they can't believe it. I think they all felt it as well, like, yeah, it's going to be two now. And wrapped up. Not at all. Only the second he has missed this season. Young uh, Daniel Sturridge will play the last few minutes of the final. with the last few minutes. Portsmouth still breathing. El Hadge. Camu. Stopped by Belletti. Free kick. A big long leg just stuck out and, and caught Belletti as he tried to move away from him. on the verge of creating some history. He's a winner of a second league and cup double in English football. And the England under 21 international Daniel Sturridge takes his place. Three added minutes, three minutes, less than three minutes away. From that date in the history. Next Friday will be the second anniversary of his last cup final in Moscow, which ended with a missed penalty. And maybe this one did when Kevin Prince Boateng missed. Chelsea have a corner. The uh, Eon man of the match has been selected by our panellists, and it is the score of the only goal so far, Didier Drogba. The score of the winner in 2007, the score of the equaliser last season, and what looks like to be the winner this season. Yellow card for Ricardo Rocha. Yeah, he was just unhappy. He wanted the decision to go Portsmouth's way. Felt there was a goal kick in the challenge with Drogba. And he's been booked for descent. Chelsea taking their time. Words exchanged between Sturridge and Brown. Not one to go quietly, Michael Brown. No, he's not happy with the challenge just then. That led to the throw and Daniel Sturridge showing the referee where he was caught. But now he's tangling with Brown. Rather bitter end. Chelsea don't need to get involved here at all. Just, just see the game out now. Preparing to celebrate for the second weekend running. Canu though. Whiting didn't down to go forward. Terry taking no chances. Brown takes the throw. Canoe on the dead ball line, but scoots up across, which check. He's able to gather. Nearly there. Yeah. Well, one sided in terms of chances today, Clive. I mean, Chelsea had them the better side, and you can't deny, deny them the win, but it could have been different. It's Chelsea history. The newly crowned champions of England keep their grip on the English Cup. It's Chelsea's first double. The final score of the They've got the winning the habit again. New Wembley, same old story. Chelsea. Chelsea's what? third what? FA what? Cup what? triumph in the four finals played here. Kevin Prince Boateng could have made it a different story. But Chelsea become Chelsea. the sixth club to retain the famous old trophy which will now sit proudly next to the Premier League trophy in an honours cabinet at Stamford Bridge that is filling up nicely again. Portsmouth soap opera season does not have a happy
Vienna. It's double delight for Chelsea, double disappointment for Pompey. Beaten by the odds in the relegation battle, beaten by the holders in the cup final. It may be a while before they face the likes of Chelsea again. Carlo Ancelotti's first season in charge, which began at Wembley with success in the Community Shield, ends the same way. Avram Grant led the resistance movement with defiance and with dignity, but now the manager may lead an exodus. How many of his players will wear Portsmouth shirts ever again? Could have been a tale of two penalties today, turned out to be the story of one free kick. Great scenes, it should be noted, from the Portsmouth fans, uh, who, in conjunction with the Chelsea fans, are congratulating, cheering their team to the bitter end. It's Chelsea's trophy, though, Chelsea's double. Let's bring in Andy, Marcel and Gareth before... ...front of the Royal Box, special cheer for Avram Grubb from Portsmouth and Chelsea fans alike. He uh, said in the morning papers that he was taken for granted during his final months at Chelsea that the wins were never down to me, only the defeats. He lifted the trophy in unison last year and now after encouraging a little bit of vocal accompaniment, Chelsea's hold on the FA Cup grows ever tighter. John Terry has got his hands on it again. The second leg of a spring double for Chelsea. Champions and cup winners. Blue is the colour. The best things come in twos.